something that you can think about during the week and a better appreciation of what our church has to offer. We will now start out and then we have a brilliant presentation. <laughs> to God and to one another. Let us pray. God of the covenant, who calls all people to reconciliation, you have made us members of the very body of Christ, yet we persist in wounding that body with our divisions, our suspicions, and our Forgive us and teach us to nurture unity and peace for the sake of Jesus Christ 
and the world he came to save. Amen. In the great compassion of our God, the death and resurrection of Christ Jesus has shown us God's forgiveness for our sins. Therefore, I declare to you the entire forgiveness for all your sins in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Thanks be to God. The peace of Christ be with you all. Please pray with me the prayer of all the nation. Redeeming God, through the power of your Holy Spirit, connect us to eternity through our hearing of your word, that we may know your living presence and seek to do your will. In Jesus' name, amen. The Old Testament lesson is one of the many psalms attributed to, the King, to King David. It's number 145, verses 1 through 5 and 17 through 21 found in your few Bibles on page 581. I will extol you, my God and King, and bless your name forever and ever. Every day I will bless you and praise your name forever and ever. Great is the Lord and greatly to be praised. His greatness is unsearchable. One generation shall law your works to another and shall declare your mighty acts on the glorious splendor of your majesty and on your wondrous, wondrous works, I will meditate. The Lord is just in all his ways and kind in all his means. The Lord is near to all who call on him, to all who call on him in truth. He fulfills the desire of all who fear him. He also hears their cry and saves them. The Lord watches over all who love him, but all the wicked he will destroy. My mouth will speak the praise of the Lord, and all flesh will bless his holy name forever and ever.
Thank you, choir. You are amazing. Our New Testament reading is from the book of Matthew. We are right at the beginning of the book of Matthew, on page 25 of your two Bibles, should you wish to follow. Then Jesus said to the crowds and to his disciples, The scribes and the Pharisees sit on Moses' feet. Therefore, do whatever they preach and follow it, but do not do as they do, for they do not practice what they teach. They tie up heavy burdens hard to bear and lay them on the shoulders of others, but they themselves are unwilling to lift the finger to move them. They do all the deeds seen by others. They make their phylacteries broad and their fringes long. They love to have the place of honor at banquets and the best seats in the synagogue. And to be greeted with respect at the marketplace and to have people call them rabbis. But you are not called rabbis, for you have one teacher, and you all our brothers and sisters. And call no one your father on earth, for you have one father who is in heaven. Nor are you to be called instructors, for you have one instructor, the Messiah. The greatest among you will be your servant, 
and all who exalt themselves will be humble, and all who humble themselves will be exalted. The word of the Lord. Thank you, God. According to the Presbyterian Church calendar, today is All Saints Sunday. It's the one Sunday in the year that's specifically set aside to honor those who have gone before. This year, as in years past, we have compiled a list of church members who passed away in the last 12 months, and also a list of those names of people who were in some way associating with our church family. We will have a special time later in our service in which we'll remember these people by calling out their name and with the tolling of our church. As we celebrate those who passed away, we do it along with Christian brothers and sisters across the nation and Christians in many countries. Although we need to note that the celebration may be done in quite a different way in various churches around the world. Rather than celebrating All Saints Sunday as we as Presbyterians do, many Christian con congregations celebrate what they call All Saints Day. And those congregations already did it this week on Tuesday, November 1. But there are many other variants. Those in the Orthodox tradition, for example, will generally commemorate their martyrs and saints on the first Sunday after Pentecost, which puts their celebration of All Saints Day in late May or even early June. But the important thing here is that we should remember that however it is celebrated, over the many centuries, Christian believers have felt it important to remember those who have died. In modern times, we often use All Saints Sunday to commemorate special individuals, those who care for them, people who significantly touch our individual lives. And we honor our contemporary saints, for example, Mother Teresa. On this All Saints Sunday, I am hoping that we can be aware of those saints who entered our life, even some of those saints whose names and faces we may have almost forgotten, such as your first grade teacher who taught you to read. These saints, through their caring and goodness, left behind within each one of us a legacy that shaped us as adults and a legacy that benefits us today. Now, with all that said, we probably need a little history to put things in context. According to the best sources I could find this week, the idea for celebrating All Saints Day goes way back to the fourth century when the early Greek Christians instituted a festival to honor the martyrs and saints who had suffered persecution at the hands of the Roman Empire. Now, about 500 years later, Pope Gregory IV, remember him, uh, issued a decree that made All Saints Day an official church holiday. He did this in the year 837. Pope Gregory declared that All Saints Day was to be celebrated on the first day of each November. November 1 was to be a special day in which the church honored those who had died. The evening before All Saints Day was called Al All Hallows Eve. And during the Middle Ages, on that particular night, people would go from door to door offering to pray for the souls of individuals who had recently passed away. It was believed that these prayers would help those people get out of purgatory and into heaven. The idea was the more church prayers that are said for, for you, the faster you will get out of purgatory and into heaven. In exchange for saving, saving prayers, people will be given food 
or money. All Hallows Eve, of course, eventually morph into our modern commercial celebration that we know as Christmas. Days to celebrate the dead have been observed by people of all kinds and all places. For example, my father's family came to the U.S. from Norway. And as he tells me, that in Norway, winter night comes early, and the nights sit longer and longer, and the traditions they begin to focus on the mystery of death. They sing songs and tell stories about trolls who lived in the caverns. The dark of winter in Norway was a time to focus on one's ancestors and to consider one's own inevitable death. But let's get back to all saints. Guess who are our saints? Who are your saints? Who are my saints? So let me tell you about two of my saints, people who touched my life and changed it for the good. Now, I'm going to start with one of my Sunday school teachers. His name was Mr. Camillo, and he taught the high school age class in the Presbyterian church that I grew up in. Mr. Kimberly is a semi-retired and highly successful international businessman. He had traveled all over the world on business, especially in Asia and the Middle East. This kind of extensive world travel was really unusual in that time because it was before the modern air travel. During his travels, he had many experiences, and he told us high school students something about them. Some of his tales were about good people, but he also talked about things that were really quite disturbing. He talked about little children dying of starvation. He talked about hunger, hunger modern slavery, political persecution, and how could we as teenagers wonder how a good and merciful God could permit such things to go on. We were in high school age, but hearing about such things on Sunday morning was really new to us, because I can assure you, prior to that, in Sunday school, what we heard were happy Bible stories and the happy and pleasant songs. Mr. Kimberly told us about things because he tried to help us to grow, to understand the human condition that we would face when we became adults. He emphasized concepts of honor and holding to your principles, even in the face of temptation. And he talked a lot about temptation. Mr. Kimberly helped the eight or ten of us to think about issues that had never, ever crossed our little suburban immature minds. He asked us to think about how we might apply Christian principles to the situation that we would encounter later in life. Mr. Kimberly was one of my saints. He even made me want to go to prison. A few years later in college, Professor Kennedy was my life. No one ever, ever called him by his first name, which was Eugene. He was always Professor Tanner, or Dr. Tanner. Professor Tanner was not a popular teacher. He was a very poor public speaker. He was, part of it was certainly due to a lifelong speech problem that caused him to read verbatim his lecture notes that he had written out in long hand on page after page after page of yellow legal pamphlet. So why would Professor Candy be a candidate for one of my personal saints? First, he was an impressive scholar. That should be enough for anyone. But more important, it was who he was. He was humble, self-effacing, and caring. And he listened to me when was, I was having problems with my studies. And he listened to my anguish when Christine Rosenblum would dump me 
Oh, 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 both of them, Mr. Kimberly and Professor Smith, were faithful followers of Christ, striving each in his own way to serve the Lord. And in so doing, they touched many, many lives besides mine. And isn't that what All Saints Sunday is all about? This is the day we are apt to remember those saints who entered our lives and who made a difference. Though most of our personal saints will never be mentioned in history books, their acts are most certainly recorded in the book of life. Each of us has our own special saints whose impact are recorded on our memory. On this All Saints Sunday, our church asks each of us to remember those special people, our own personal saints. However, and there always seems to be a however. There is a question that each of us must face, and that is how will we be remembered by someone on a future All Saints Sunday? Will we be remembered with fondness, perhaps gratitude, and maybe even thanks? Think about it. We encounter lots and lots of people throughout our lives. Why is it? that only a few of them stand out in our memories, while many hundreds and hundreds of them just pass through our lives. I can remember one of my uncles and my mother's He never, ever seemed to have a kind word or even a warm smile. He was a very successful businessman, and he might have been a good role model or even a mentor for me and my cousins. But what did we actually learn from him? And each of my four cousins learned just one thing. We learned to stay away from him. Yes, I was at his funeral, but I was there because I knew I should be there, not out of any affection or even respect. So what makes the difference? To deal with that question, let's turn to our lectionary reading from the Gospel of Matthew. The heart of today's Gospel story is Jesus' criticism of the first century Jewish and Christian people. The part that immediately precedes it is where the, the scribes and Pharisees criticized Jesus for working on the Sabbath, healing the sick, and was work. And therefore, it should not be done on the Sabbath. Matthew points out that Jesus kept the law of the Sabbath, but he also insisted that the most important thing was not adherence to the law, but ministry to the sick and need. When the Pharisees called him to task, Jesus responded that kindness to others, especially those in need, takes precedence over not lying unquestioning adherence to scriptural law. Further, this passage notes that some of the leaders in their early church were following right in the footsteps of the Jewish scribes and Pharisees. They were acting just like them. They were busy setting themselves up, carving out special privileges to go with their perceived exalted living. Matthew condemns the implied that Jesus said exactly what the followers of Jesus Christ should not be doing. According to this section of Matthew, service to God should be based on humility and not putting oneself above them. It should be rooted in the understanding that all people are created equal in the sight of God. What Jesus is talking about is the capacity to lead one's life as a kind of saint, in a spirit of fairness and union with other people and in union with God. 
this mindset may enable us to take a close look at ourselves and perhaps see ourselves as God sees them as important people. Thank you, Mr. Kimber. It enables us to see others, no matter who or what they may be, to be valuable and worthy of this. We're in the heat of the political season. All week, I've been watching the World Series and football games, and you may have seen the people watching too. But there are a number of political commercials in the country. They are almost all attack ads, demeaning the opposition and portraying opponents in the worst possible way. There are candidates trying to beat down their opponents and depict the opposition as being unworthy of respect, or even in some cases as deranged subhuman beings. The goal of commercials is to not diminish to prove oneself superior to all others. In many ways, they are like the scribes and Pharisees who also thought they were superior beings with their phylacteries and robes. And to think about it, how are the scribes and Pharisees remembered today? What Jesus in our scripture is advocating is just the opposite. Jesus suggests that we should have the ability to see ourselves as part of the same soil as everybody else. Professor Canner was an eminent and highly respected scholar with lots of publications. And it would have been really easy for him to blow off a young and very confused student. But he didn't. He listened, he cared, he helped. Mr. Kimberly was highly successful as a businessman who had traveled all over the world, mostly on steamship. Why did he take time out of his life to talk to a bunch of the high school students and to tell them about things that they knew nothing about? The saints that touched my life were not perfect human beings. They all had issues. They all had challenges and difficulties. And the same thing that your life were probably not perfect people either. They, however, were people who came into our lives, connected with us, and changed us. This morning on All Saints Sunday, I invite you to take a moment to think about those who have gone before, to think about their examples and the ways of living the Christian faith. And think about the meaning that they gave to your life. Think about what they taught you. And then think about how you want to be remembered. And if you want to say a prayer for the deceased, like they did in the time, that's okay too. It might give you an opportunity to encounter some of your saints once again. And then you can learn again. Perhaps in a whole new way. Okay. Let us stand as we are able to offer the affirmation of faith. Together, let us confess our faith. In serving God's people, we commit ourselves to you. Giving generously out of our abundance of time, talents, and treasure to the support of God's work. Protecting God's earth so that all life can flourish. Following Christ's example by caring for the needs of our community, our nation, and our world. Reconciling those who are separated from God and their neighbor. Calling others to join in the mission of Christ's earth.
Good morning. Good morning. This morning's Minute for Stewardship is brought to you by the Facilities Ministry. You've probably heard me describe our church as three buildings in one. This amazing sanctuary was built in 1905. The education wing was added during the 50s and 60s. And the latest addition, consisting of the narthex, new bathrooms, office suite, kitchen, fellowship hall, and the lounge, were all done in the late 1990s. This morning, I'd like to talk about our HVAC system, heating, ventilation, air conditioning. You may be surprised to learn how many units serve this church. Any guesses? 12, what? Three? Five, seven, 15. Two of these units have been retired and there are no plans to replace them, mostly because they only serve rooms that we store equipment in. Well, let's see. Five of the units have been replaced in the past decade. So currently there are eight of these units that are over 20 years old. And sure enough, during our recent semi-annual inspection, we discovered that three of these HVAC units are not functioning. The session has approved replacing the largest unit, which serves the narthex and the adjacent areas. This is a seven and a half ton unit, which will cost us $17,050. That's for the unit, crane, and the labor to put it in. Considering the average lifespan of an HVAC unit is only 15 to 20 years, we can expect these types of expenses to continue in the future. When we talk about the church, of course, we're not referring simply to this building. Yet this building is our church home. A home requires tending and routine maintenance, and there are always unexpected repairs and expenses. This stewardship season, please consider how you can support and maintain our church building. You can volunteer your time by helping with chores and work days throughout the year. Share your talents by offering special skills you possess, which minimizes costs of hiring professionals. And finally, please prayerfully consider the church's facility and operational needs as you plan your 2023 contribution pledge for Stewardship Sunday. Thank you. In celebration of the God of life who sustains, upholds, saves, and watches over us, let us continue our worship through the offering of our gifts, tithes, and offerings to Almighty God. <laughs>
Holy One, in gratitude for all that you give us, including those who have gone before us, we offer you these gifts and ask you to bless and multiply them, that they may become the good work and word that comforts and strengthens both our hearts and the hearts of others. Amen. Now, now remember the saints who have left us this congregation over the past year. Let us pray. Lord Jesus, you told Mary and Martha that you are the resurrection and the life. You promised your disciples that you would prepare a place for them in heaven. And you promised the repentant thief on the cross that he would be with you in paradise. Fill our hearts with these firm and certain promises. Comfort those who remain with the assurance that those who have died in faith now see you face to face. Amen. With hope in Christ and in the resurrection of the eternal life, we remember those in this community of faith who have died in the last year. We will do this by reading their names and ringing the, the tower bell. With thanksgiving, we remember Susan Chase Corker, Mary Black Montevani, Mary D. Glover. John Holt. We also remember Donna Forsberg, Jamie Coogan, Linda Chell, Roberta Aurora States, Keith Morris, Mike Haynes, Nancy Kreischer. Lawrence Allen, Irwin Way Center. We thank you, O oh God, for the saints of all ages, for those who in times of darkness kept the lamp of faith burning, for the great souls who saw visions of larger truth and dared to declare it, for the multitude of quiet and gracious souls whose presence has purified and sanctified the world. And for those known and loved by us who have passed from this eternal earthly fellowship into a fuller life for you. Amen. Uh. share with you the thrift shop and and um, the thrift shop and grandson court on the acquisition of their second building on North Illinois Avenue. Corey, I believe, is your nephew Kitty? Grandson. Grandson. Oh wow. So that that is certainly a joy. Are there other joys in my hand? Yes, there are. Uh, I have two joys from our folks at home. 
Uh, one is that Carrie and his family are recovered from their illnesses due to COVID. And secondly, uh, Kathy Manfredi noted that five of our choir members sang in the Paducah Singers concert yesterday, and it was a fabulous concert. We give thanks to God for these blessings. Thanks be to God. Do we have concerns about people in need? Yes, I do. I have uh, five concerns from people uh, worshiping from home. Uh, first of all, uh, from the Manfredi's, uh, for us to remember families of the victims of the Halloween disaster that occurred in Korea. Um, secondly, they also asked us to pray for a friend of theirs who was going through a difficult time. Uh, third, our uh, Suban, our, if in our Afghan family, uh, is recovering from a cold. Uh, he was fairly uh, ill earlier this week. Uh, Carol and David King asked for prayers for their daughter-in-law who has a respiratory infection. And finally, Carrie asked us to, to um, be concerned about uh, voting in Tuesday's election. Thank you. For all these people and all who are in need, God inspires us to pray. Here's our prayers and answers our prayers. Let us pray. To you, our Heavenly Father, be all praise and glory. Day after day, you fill our lives with blessings and joy. And for all of this, we give you thanks. At this time of the changing of the seasons, we are grateful for your many gifts. We are thank you. We thank you for a home to dwell in, family to love, and friends to cheer. We give you thanks for ample food, for wealth, warmth in the coming winter, and for our many material things. And we are assured by our faith that looks forward to a larger life in your kingdom. So let us live today and every day so that we may hear your call with all our heart, with all our mind, and with all our spirit. We pray for our nation as it experiences political crisis. Grant our country's leaders wisdom that they may guide our nation in ways of justice and peace. And help us as a nation to stand for the just and for the good, to put what is true before partisan causes and selfish. Almighty and ever living God, your Son taught us to pray not only for our children, but also for others. So on this All Faith Sunday, let us remember our loved ones who have gone before. Help us to treasure their memories and to remember how much they meant to us in life. And let us pray for all who are in tro our trouble, for those who are in sorrow, in poverty, sickness, grief, and those who have any other kind of need. And we pray for your guidance throughout our lives. It is through the grace, grace of Jesus Christ that we are justified before God and we are saved through our faith. We thank you for Jesus the Christ who came to make all things now. Let us now play together the prayer that he taught his disciples. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. If your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive our sins and we forgive those who sin against us. And deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours now and forever.
This is the time for announcements, and I believe Pastor Karen has an announcement. Hey, good morning. This is wild. I'm looking at Rob looking at me. That's wild. Um, I wanted to thank you all for a meaningful and lovely and um, edifying service this morning. So thank you all for your leadership to provide that. Uh, the, <clears throat> the announcement I have is that we will be having faith dialogues next week. We're going to do a thing I'm calling Presbyterian ABC. Uh, a being something like, oh, I don't know, the Apostles' Creed, and Z being something like uh, zero people sitting in the front pew. And it's designed for people who don't know very much about what it means to be Presbyterian, but also for those of you who have been Presbyterian your entire life. Um, hopefully you'll learn some new things and uh, enjoy the refresher as well. So we'll do that in our usual faith dialogue time. Uh, right after fellowship time next week. So I'm looking forward to having a bunch of you participate in that. And it will be both uh, live and on Zoom. Thanks. Any other announcements from the congregation? If not, here are our charges of blessing. When I joined this church over 40 years ago, we often had a charge as well as a blessing at the end of the service. That charge tried to set us out as to what we should do with our lives in the coming weeks. Let us here, 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 the, here the charge. Go out into the world in peace. Have courage. Hold on to what is good. Return no one evil for evil. Strengthen the faint hearted, support the weak, help the suffering, honor all people, love and serve the Lord, rejoicing in the power of the Holy Spirit. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with you now and forever. Amen.